Hello again internet peoples. In this video we are going to be discussing 2D raycasts and working through a simple example. If you have any questions regarding the content of this video, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me on Twitter and I will endeavour to answer your questions. Right, let's crack on. So what are raycasts? Well, they are conceptually like a laser beam that is fired from a point out into space in a particular direction. Any object that makes contact with that beam can then be detected and reported back. Unity is able to cast rays in both 3D and 2D space and in this video we will be focusing on 2D. So you may be asking why these 2D ray casts are useful. The answer is for numerous reasons, but 2D platform games particularly benefit from them. In games like Robbie Swifthand, the developers shared this, which shows how the main character uses ray casts to interact with the environment. The same can be said for many platform games and is likely used in games such as Thomas Was Alone. But it's not just about platform games. Games such as The Escapist will also be using a similar approach to allow guards to detect the player if they are moving around when they shouldn't be. So now that you have a better understanding of a 2D Greycast's purpose, what will we be creating? We're going to create this simple example, whereby a pointer fires a raycast at targets. For 2D Raycast in Unity, we use the physics2d.raycast method and receive their responses into a raycast hit 2D. This method takes a total of six arguments, but in our example we are focusing on the three that will mainly be used, but with a notable mention of a fourth. The first argument we will be passing is a vector2 detailing the origin of our raycast. Following this, we will be passing in a vector2 representing the direction of our raycast. Finally, we will be passing in the distance our raycast should travel from the point of origin as a float value. There is also an argument worth noting, as mentioned previously, and that is the int value representing the layer mask. This can be used to only allow the raycast to detect objects on a specific layer. For example, a layer that only contains enemy game objects. So with no further delay, let's head over to Unity and get on with it. Let's start by getting our views to look correct by switching to 16x9 format and making sure our scene view is centrally focused. Our first step is to set up the targets, so let's create a sprite game object for that. Now let's ensure that our sprite is positioned in the centre by hitting the reset in the inspector. As the sprite is invisible, we need to now go and change the sprite to something that's more appropriate. But that's a little small, so we need to scale the sprite up by choosing a suitable amount to adjust the X and Y scale values by. So that Raycast can collide with this target, we need to ensure that it has a rigid body 2D. We need to set that to be kinematic, so it's not affected by physics such as gravity. And so that the hit can be registered, we need to add a collider to the sprite. So let's add a Circle Collider 2D, as that's most appropriate for the sprite we've chosen. And finally, let's give the game object an appropriate name. Let's duplicate that game object, then rename it appropriately, and adjust its position. Repeat that for how many other targets you wish to have. Now we need to create our player game object, a pointer from a new sprite game object. As per the target game objects, let's reset the pointer's position, then rename it appropriately. Then choose an appropriate sprite image for it. Again, scale it up, but this time just on the Y value, so that it's long like a pointer. Finally, let's move its position to an appropriate location. Now we have a pointer, we need to add a script to it. And open that script up. The first thing to add to the script is a control to rotate our pointer. And for that we will need a vector3 variable to store the amount of rotation we want to occur. So let's create that and call it horizontal movement as it is rotation from left to right. The next step is then to populate that variable with a new vector3. The vector3 should include a value from the horizontal input. It specifically needs storing as the Z attribute of the vector3, and it is made negative to ensure it is flipped appropriately to match the visuals on the screen. The reason for this is beyond the scope of this video, as we are focusing on Raycast. Next, we need to add a float variable. This will be used to control the speed at which the pointer will rotate, so let's create that. For 
Finally, we need to pass in the new vector 3 and our rotation speed into the game.object transform.rotate method to rotate the game object. We will multiply that by time.delta time to ensure that it matches the frame rate. So that's the rotation sorted. Let's compile that and head over to Unity to test it. That's the pointer control sorted. So that we know when our raycast has been invoked, let's first create an approach for firing our raycast by taking input from the keyboard. I'd like us to use a spacebar to trigger the raycast. Now that we have a trigger, let's create the code to fire the raycast using physics2d.raycast. To store our results, first we will need a raycast hit 2d, which we'll then use later to detect any hits. First argument will be the position of our pointer as its origin. Then we're going to use transform.transform .transform direction to pass in a vector 2 for the up direction, which is in relation to our local game object's rotation. In other words, fire it upwards out the top of our sprite. Then we pass in a float fixed value for the distance the raycast can travel. And that's it, that's our raycast. Now we have a raycast, we need to process the results using an if statement. If you receive a hit, the raycast hit 2D variable will be true. And if it is, we should do something. In this case, we will simply output to the console with just the detail of what the ray hit. We'll stop here, compile the code, and go and test it out. Ensuring the console is visible, hit the play button. Use your left and right arrow keys to rotate your pointer and hit the space to cast a ray. And there you have it, our ray is hitting our targets. Although we get a text output, it's difficult to visualize this. So let's head back to the code and add some additional features. Let's make use of a method called debug.drawRay to draw a line representing the ray within our scene view. This takes our pointer's transform.position as its origin, the same transform.transform .transform direction as the ray. We then multiply that by 10 to give the distance for the line to travel. And finally, we choose a color for the line to be, in this case, red. To make it more obvious which target we hit, let's change the color of our target. To do this, we use the results stored within our raycast hit 2D variable. We use it to obtain the target sprite renderer. And then set the sprite's color to what we want, in this case, red. And that's the additions. Let's compile and head back over to Unity. Ensuring our console is still visible, hit play. And now, when we trigger those raid casts, we can see it within our scene view and within the game. The targets change colour when we hit them. That's it, a reasonably simple method within Unity which provides some powerful and useful features, don't you agree? I really hope that this guide is useful to you. If you liked it, please click like and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications of my future videos. I also regularly stream game development content mixed with some gaming over on Twitch, so why not head over there via the link in the description and follow me so you can pop by and chat when I'm next streaming. Thank you for watching.